ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد ذلك احييكم بتهت الاسلام وهي السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Inshallah we almost finish the hadith sahih authentic hadith because you already said that hadith is divided into three we have authentic hadith we have good hadith and we have weak hadith the authentic hadith we said whole hadith allazi ittasala sanaduhu بنقل عادل الضابط ام مثله الى منتهاه لا يكون شاذا ولا معللا this is the definition of hadith as sahih we said that hadith as sahih is the hadith which the isnad of the hadith the isnad means the chance of the narrators because each hadith it consists two things al isnad and matan the isnad means the chance of narrators that narrated hadith from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to us like always i give example like al imam al bukhari haddathana abdullah ibn yusuf akhbarana malik an abi zinad an al a'raj an abi huraira radiyallahu anhu qala قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم طعام اثنين كافي ثلاثه so this hadith consists two things the first thing is isnad from bukhari to abu huraira حدثنا عبد الله بن يوسف اخبرنا مالك ان ابي زناد ان لا ارجع ان ابي هريره رضي الله عنه so this is called isnad silsila to ruwat al musilatu ila al matan means the chance of narrators that they will take you to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is called isnad am matan from qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ta'am isnain ka fi salasa from the saying of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ta'am isnain ka fi salasa this is called matan means matan the saying of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or his action or his characters this called matan so like i explained to you the hadith if you want to know this hadith is authentic or is a good hadith or is a weak hadith just you can look through the isnad through the isnad so if the isnad is fulfilled five conditions of hadith sahih is called as sahih if it's not fulfilled the five conditions we said this hadith is weak this condition i already explained it to you first one is ittisal sanad means ittisal sanad means the isnad each rawi in the isnad he hear hadith from his teacher like example haddathana abdullah bin yusuf akhbarana malik an abi zinad an al a'raj an abi huraira so if we, we, we must to search and you find is it abdul bukhari here this hadith from abdullah bin yusuf is it abdullah bin yusuf here this hadith from malik is it malik here this hadith from abu zinad is it abu zinad here this hadith from a'raj is it a'raj here this hadith from abu huraira so this is ittisal sanad i already explained to you if you want to know how is it buhari meet abdullah bin yusuf <coughs> or is it buhari here the hadith from abdullah bin yusuf we said we have only one 
way that you can go and find if Abdullah bin if Buhari meet Abdullah bin Yusuf and if Buhari hear the hadith from Abdullah bin Yusuf. We said firstly we can look which year Buhari was born and which year Abdullah bin Yusuf he, he passed away. So like I gave you example Buhari was born on 196 after Hijra and Abdullah bin Yusuf passed away 242 after Hijra. So it's possible Buhari to meet Abdullah bin Yusuf. It's possible because Buhari was born 196 and Abdullah bin Yusuf was passed away 242 after Hijra. So it's possible. So to, uh, if you want to know that, is it Buhari here, the Hadith from Abdullah bin Yusuf, just we look which year Buhari was born and which year Abdullah bin Yusuf was passed away. The same thing, Abdullah bin Yusuf and Malik. Abdullah bin Yusuf, Malik, he passed away 179 after Hijra. So when we go to the profile of Abdullah bin Yusuf, he's from Misra, Egypt. So when we read his profile, we find that 160 after Hijra, Abdullah bin Yusuf went to the Medina and met Malik and narrated Muatta Malik from Malik. After he came back to the Misra, after uh, 19 years, Malik passed away. So Abdullah bin Yusuf already met Malik, the same thing, Malik met uh, Abu Zinat, his name is Abdullah bin Zakawan. And the same thing, Abu Zinat met Araj, Abdullah bin Hormuz. And Abdullah bin Hormuz Araj is the student of Abu Huraira. So from here we know that this is not is connected. Because each Rawi Sima'u kulli rawi min rawi lazi yadihi. Each rawi, he hear the hadith from the, his teacher. So this is Istisal al-Sanat. So I explain, I give the many examples regarding the Istisal al-Sanat. Then, the second condition is al-adala. Al-adala. Al-adala means just, justice. Means the person who narrated the hadith, he must to be a just. Means he's not a Pasik. Because in, in Islam, we don't say to anybody is adil until he fulfilled this condition. First one, to be a Muslim. So, if the unbeliever narrated the hadith, his hadith is rejected. Because he's not adil. But I explain to you, if the unbeliever hear the hadith, but the time that he delivered the hadith to the people, he become a Muslim, so his hadith is accepted. I give you an example like Abu Sufyan, radiallahu anhu, hadith in Hirak al Bukhari, the long hadith. When the Abu Sufyan hear this hadith, he's an unbeliever. So, but when he delivered the hadith to the people, he became a Muslim, so his hadith is accepted. But if he delivered that hadith, when he is an unbeliever, we can never accept the, his hadith because he's not adil, because kafir is not adil. Because the condition of adil, you must to be a Muslim. Second condition, before you, uh, you call you adil, you must to mature. If small boy on the age narrated hadith and deliver, we can never accept the hadith. But the ulama said, if on the age, hear the hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when he delivered the hadith to the people he delivered, he delivered it after he matured his hadith is accepted like many many young sahaba like Abdullah bin Abbas Abdullah bin Zubair Hassan bin Ali Hussein bin Ali all of them when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away they are young Abdullah bin Zubair he have only 10 years when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away Abdullah bin Abbas, he had 13 years. Hassan, he had 9 years. Hussein, he had 8 years. But the hadith is accepted. Why? Because when they deliver the hadith, they deliver it after they become matured. 
But if they deliver the hadith before they, they become mature, the hadith is rejected. This is al adil. Then another condition again for adil, he must do not fasik. If somebody is fasik, we can never accept his hadith. So how the ulama, they say fasik here this, the, somebody who commit the kabaira. Maybe if somebody is drinking alcohol, commit a zina, giba, and uh, another kabaira, kaba, kabaira zunu. So his hadith is rejected because he's not adil. He's not adil. So this is al adala, al adala to what? So then, after that, another condition of hadith of Sahih is Adabit, strong memorization. If your memorization is weak, the ulama reject the, your hadith. Why? Because this belongs to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we need somebody who can memorize it very well. You then make even single mistake inside the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one who explained the Quran and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say in the Quran wa anzalna ilayka zikra litubayyina linnas ma nuzila ilayhim wa la'allahum yatafakkarun Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we reveal Quran to you in order to explain this Quran to the people so all the explanation of the Quran, all the explanation of the Quran is for Sunnah. Because only Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can explain the Quran. Because when the Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in the Quran, Aqimus Salah, to perform the prayer. We, we don't know how to perform the prayer. We don't know. So who teach us how to perform the prayer? It's Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayuha allazina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala allazina min qablikum la allakum tattakum Allah command us to perform the fasting Ramadan we don't know how to, we do the past because if we say just we look Quran we translate it to Arabic language we, we will make a lot of mistake because asiyam in luga if we said asiyam in luga mean al imsak an al kalam if we said what is the meaning of siyam in Arabic language, the origin meaning of siyam means to keep quiet from the to keep silent. This is the reason why Maryam, when she gave birth of the Prophet Isa, she said, "Inni nazaratul rahmani sawma, walan ukalim aliyama in siya." This is the meaning of siyam in Luga. She said she, she promised she don't speak with anybody. So. If you said a siyam, if you don't go to the sunnah, how can how you can understand siyam? Like a salah. Salah, the meaning of salah in Luga, in Arabic means dua. So when the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Akimu salah, you perform the prayer. You don't know how to perform. Because if you look the meaning of salah in Arabic language means just to do dua. But in Islam not. So when the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَتِمُوا الْحَجَّ وَأُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ Al-Hajj, if we said Hajj in Arabic language means intention to do something. To have intention to do something. But in Islam, not. So, is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained the Quran to us. Because if we said we, we take Quran to understand and apply it, we make a lot of mistake. So the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one that can explain the Quran. And the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is Sunnah? Ma usira ala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam min kawlin, aw fi'ilin, aw takalil, aw sifatin khalikiya, aw khulikiya. Haza, this is the meaning of Hadith or Sunnah. Anything that narrated from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from his saying, or his action, or his approves, or his physical appearance or his behaviors, all this called sunnah. So this saying of the Prophet Sallallahu and his behaviors and his action is the translation of the Quran. This is the reason why when 
sambaji kwanto Aisha an aksa kaifa kana khuluqu an-nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam what are the characters and behaviors of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Aisha said to him hal kunta taqra'u al-qur'an did you read the quran he said yes Aisha said kana khuluquhu al-qur'an his behaviors is quran because anything that is the quran prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam applying it in his life so this explanation of the quran is sunnah so you can never understand quran until you learn the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this sunnah how you can differentiate this is authentic from prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or it's not authentic only true had true most allowed hadith so this is the another condition somebody if he say uh, memorization you must to memorize it very well so the ulama like i explained to you they divide memorization into two we have doctor kitaba and doctor sadar doctor sadar means memorization of heart means you memorize the hadith of head and this the ulama put condition you must to memorize it very well and if you want to deliver it you deliver it like you memorize it you don't do mistake it be in single word like you hear you memorize it and you give it like that so if you do a lot of mistakes so your hadith is rejected your hadith is rejected and another memor another and second types of memorization doctor kitaba memorization by written because the people they are not the same somebody allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him capacity to memorize anything but somebody cannot so the ulama said because maybe some people they, they don't have capacity to memorize the of head then the ulama said is allowed for them to write but they put the condition they said if he hear hadith he write it first and after he finish he read the hadith to his teacher and his teacher if any mistake inside to correct him after that he must to put his book in a safe he don't he don't give his book to anybody even his son or his wife he must to keep it in safe when he want to deliver hadith he bring the book and he open it he read after he finish he return the book in the safe so this is the doubt al kitaba so another condition is allah yakuna shaz the hadith is not shaz what is shaz means the shaz i always i explain to you if two student from one teacher but the one student his memorization is very strong than other one then these two students narrated one had this from the same teacher the one st first student said the teacher said this house it has black paint and the second student said the teacher said this house it has white paint so we look which had this which among them is very strong in memorization so if we find the first student is the very strong in memorization we said his hadith is authentic the second hadith is shaz because contradictive of two hadith from the one teacher so we find that this student is very strong we said okay maybe the second student make a mistake or shaz means maybe five student all the post student narrated from the teacher said this hadith is this house is it has black paint and only one student said this house from the same teacher this house it has white paint so his hadith is rejected because it's a shaz then illa means something that is very, that can be hide in is not but not all the ulama of hadith can find it only the big scholars of hadith this illa may be a mistake i give you example i write in the i give you the example maybe in it's not somebody maybe he narrated the hadith he missed one rawi and somebody bring it this is illa 
I already explained to you. So this is the pipe condition of Hadithul Sahih. So now, what is Hadithul Hasan? What is Hadithul Hasan? What is Hadithul Hasan? What is Hadithul Hasan? Hadithul Hasan huwa matasala isnaduhu binakalin adil an mislihi ila munta allazi khappa allazi khappa dabtuhu ila munta hawu wa la yakuna shazzan wa la muallala so this is the definition of hadithul al hasan so only little bit different between hadithul hasan and hadithul sahih all the condition in hadithul sahih is the, the same condition in hadithul hasan only in adopt so hadithul hasan must be have ittisal sanat Adalat or what? Allah yakuna shaz wala mu'allala Like I explained to you All the same thing with hadith society Only in one condition In doubt, in memorization Why? The hadith of Hassan The rawi that narrated the hadith of Hassan His memorization Is not strong very well like the person who narrated the hadith sahih so this is only the difference but all the conditions are the same all the conditions are the same all the conditions are the same so hadith al hasan the same is hadith sahih only in one condition only in one condition in adopt so the hadith sahih the Rawi narrated the Hadith of Sahih. His memorization is very strong. But the, but the Rawi that narrated the Hadith of Hassan, his memorization is not strong like Hadith of Sahih. So only this different, but only everything is the same thing. Only in this memorization. So we said that the Hadith of Sahih, the Hadith of Hassan, its condition is the same with hadith of sahih only in doubt only in doubt the hadith of sahih the rawi that narrated that hadith his memorization is very strong but the rawi that narrated the hadith hasan his memorization is not very well strong like hadith of sahih so all, all this is the difference between hadith of hasan and hadith sahih but in the ruling in the ruling they are the same if i say in the ruling because it's compulsory to apply the hadith sahih the same thing is compulsory to use hadith al hasan in the ruling they are the same like we said this is the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because of this hadith authentic we said again we said again this hadith this is the sunnah of prophet because of this hadith hasan so what is the example of hadith al hasan i give you one hadith is hasan like um, hadith abi sayyidin al khudri radiyallahu anhu no no hadith hadith abu hurairah radiyallahu anhu qal aksaru من قول لا إله إلا الله قبل أن يهال بينكم وبينها ولكنوها موتاكم فربي صلى الله عليه وسلم said you, you used to say always لا إله إلا الله before something to prevent you to say لا إله إلا الله and لكنوها موتاكم if you are people they will pass away just try just try to said to them said la ilaha illallah means like you know we are if somebody he want to pass away said to him said la ilaha illallah so this hadith is hasan why 
because in the isnad of hadith we have one rawi his name Dimam Dimam bin Sa'alaba before that this hadith uh, Abu Ya'ala Abu Ya'ala fi he narrated this hadith so Dimam bin Sa'alaba he fulfilled the conditions of hadith sahih but only one condition in doubt because his, his memorization is not too strong like other narrators so for this rawi this hadith is hasan this hadith is hasan because his memorization is not too strong he's strong but he's not too strong like the person who narrated the hadith sahih so this is the reason why this hadith is hasan this hadith is hasan so like i said no difference between hadith al sahih and hadith al hasan in terms of ruling all if hadith is sahih we can use with it if hadith is hasan we can use with it but if maybe we have two hadiths one is authentic sahih and one is hasan and this hadith may be contradict, contradicting between hadith al hasan and hadith al sahih so if in terms of that we said we can use with hadith al sahih we leave hadith al hasan but this if we try to imagine them but it's, it's impossible to imagine them so if it's possible to imagine them so we can use the hadith of sahih and leave the hadith of hasan because the hadith of sahih is most authentic hadith than hadith of al hasan than hadith of al hasan so all the condition that i explained to you for hadith of sahih is the same condition with hadith of hasan only in one condition a doubt memorization so if if we find any rawi in the isnad his memorization is not stronger we call this hadith is hasan yeah all the word rawi it a lot a lot of them yeah, a lot not one it, it is not this is the reason why it, it is not if you want to find is this sahih or authentic just you go and read the profile of the uh, narrators so if you find all all of them they are strong in memorization we said their hadith is authentic but if you find one only one in the is not maybe in the is not we have five narrators the four their memorization they are very strong but one of them is not strong so we said hadith is hasan because like i explained min awali ila muntahahu all this condition each rawi must to fulfill it from the post rawi up to the end but if you find somebody inside the isnad his memorization is not too strong we said the hadith is hasan the same thing if maybe five rewards the, this is not has maybe six ruat and we find that all the five ruat they are they, they are all they are they fulfill the five condition of hadith sahih so the one rawi when we read his profile you find he's a weak or he's a pasik or he's a kazab so the hadith we rejected it we don't said the five or related this hadith so only one we can accept no because each rawi in the isnad he must to fulfill the five condition like i said why ulama put this rules and regulation because this is the explanation the sunnah is the explanation of quran if they don't put that many many things you can apply it is not true so this is the reason why the ulama put this condition in order to separate the hadith authentic and non-authentic. 
This is the reason why, because the Sunnah is the explanation of the Quran. Like I said, if you don't read the Sunnah, you can never understand the Quran. When the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allahu malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Then, the Sahaba, they don't know how to do salah to the Prophet. They don't know. Even Prophet himself, he don't know. Once I have gone to the Prophet, he asked him. He said, Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran command us to do salat to you. But how we can do salat to you? Then Prophet Sallallahu keep quiet. He don't reply to him. So after some minutes or some hours, Jibril came and teach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the salat. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, why is the person who asks me regarding the salah? Then he come, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If you want to do salah to me, you said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun mujid wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun mujid. So this, you see, Translate is the explanation of Quran because if the Prophet he don't explain, you don't know how to do salah. So this is the reason why the ulama bring the rules and regulation in order to prevent the sunnah because it's the explanation of Quran. Because if you don't have sunnah, you can never understand Quran. This is the reason why Prophet said in one hadith authentic, Allah in Nikat Uti to Quran wa misluhuma. He said to the Sahaba, to the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me Quran with something together with the Quran. It's Sunnah. So this is the reason why Imam Shafi'i he said, in the Quran, if you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-Hikmah means Sunnah. Imam Shafi'i said that. Each Hikmah, if Allah mentioned it with Quran in the Quran, Yu'allimuhumul kitab wal hikmah. This hikmah means a sunnah. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the one bringing Quran to you, and he is the one who can explain that Quran to you. So this is the reason why in Hajj, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed the Hajj. At that time, Hajjatul Wada, more than 100,000 of Sahaba performed that Hajj with, together with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the end, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, he said, if you have any question, come and ask me. He said, Khuzu anni manasikakum. Come and copy Hajj from me. And they asked him many questions he explained to them. He said, any person who have question ask me. Maybe this is the end. This is the last. Maybe you, you can never meet me in uh, another, in the future days or in another year. You can never meet me. Because after Hajjatul Wada, after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned back to the Medina, Shahru Jil Hijj, after that, Mahara, Safar, Rabi Awal, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. Only three months after Hajjatul Wada, he passed away. So, this is the reason why the Prophet explained everything to us. He said, Allah hal balaktu. I already explained everything regarding the Islam to you. The Sahaba said yes. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma shahad, Allahumma shahad. Allah to be a witness. So this is the reason why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, everything that we need, he already explained to us. Anything that we need, he already explained to us. This is the reason why he explained regarding the Dujjad. Even you can never find any Prophet who explained Dujjad very well like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anything that Dujel he can do, Prophet, explain to it. Even the days that Dujel he will spend in the world, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explain. The physical appearance of, of Dujel, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explain it. Anything that Dujel he will do, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explain in order to prevent us to the front of Dujel. So anything that we need, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explain it. But if you don't know, just go and ask. So this is the reason why the ulama put this condition in order to prevent the sunnah. Because if they don't do that, 
Many people bring many, many things they say Prophet Salah Salva said. And they apply in, 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 in religion. So somebody, he do this, something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he don't command him and the Prophet, he don't command him. So this, this is a problem because if you die, you stay before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah asks you, who said to do this thing? If you say you prophet, you have evidence. You have evidence. So this is the reason why the ulama put this condition in order to differentiate between hadith, this explanation of the Quran that is authentic and the explanation that is not authentic. So this is the hadith sahih, hadith al Hasan. So in summary, no difference between hadith al Hasan and hadith al sahih. Only in one condition. Only in one condition in adopt. The narrators in Hadith Sahih, all of them they have strong memorization. But the narrators in Hadith Al Hasan, their memorization is not well strong like Hadith Sahih. So this is the problem. But all the conditions are the same. It is all the same. The same. Adam Shijuv, the same. Question? Okay. Eh? Uh, physical of appearance of the gen? Yes, Professor Lassar explained, he said he have one eye. So, what is the relation of the one eye with the one eye that's going on in the world? What is the relation? With that one eye and the one eye that's going on in the world, they do like some uh, celebrities, they, they have that symbol of one eye, and from the time of the terrorist, symbol of one eye. What is the relation of the one eye? Yeah, because these people, they said, they call the same of Bada to Shaitan. The people that they are worshipping, Shaitan. So they already know the Dajjal, so they are waiting for him to he come. So they started putting the symbol of Dajjal. This is like a Yahud, because Professor Lassar explained to us, 70,000 of Jews, Yahud, they will follow Dajjal if he come. So now they started, they are waiting for Dajjal, because in the believe in Yahud, they say that they are waiting for somebody he will come in order to help them to defeat the world. This is the in belief in Yahud. So they are waiting for Dujjal. Because Professor Sama explained to us that if the Dujjal come, 70,000 of Yahud, they will follow him. Or more than that. So this is the reason now they started putting the symbol of one eyes. Because they are waiting for Dujjal. They believe that the Dujjal is the person who can help them in order to defeat the world. There's no one eye attached to the time. Eh? The eye is not attached to the time. It's hanging up. It, like, I don't understand. What do you mean? You know, in, in the symbol of the new world order, mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know this, I don't know. Yeah, maybe because they see maybe these musicians, players, they all this, they put the sign of Dujjal like this, like the secret society, all this, this, this all they are waiting for Dujjal. Because Professor Allah Sallallahu explained, he said, he have two eyes, one eye is normal, and one eye, one eye can like a, you know, like how I can, one eye, his one eye, his right, his left eyes is okay, and the left eyes is not work. Okay, it's two eyes. Yes, one but eye. only one eye, yeah, can see, and that one eye that can see it has problem again because it's not like our eyes. It's like the professor Lama said, like you know, he said, I don't know how to put it in English. He said, "Innaha tapiyatun ala wajhi." You know, you know the tamr. You know, you know, like if you put tamr like this, his eyes not like like our eyes, but is multiple uh, ahakaza. I don't know how to put it in English. Yes. Yes, it's not like this one. Now, our eyes is okay now, but his own like put it like this. 
Yes. And the one is already close, but that the one that you see is not like this one. It's like in a inable type here. You know inab. You know inab like inab. Like inab if you put like this. Yeah, like drop. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, how to up, uh, maybe um, some maybe I bring the somebody I saw he tried to I have one book I want I want I want check it inshallah somebody tried to draw how the ears of the gel in his book if I find that book I think I have it I bring it to you to see <laughs> no, no, this is the iptila from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the gel, uh, the gel, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained he went, he, he go uh, all over the world to look for tedious only. Any, any town the gel he will enter, or less Medina and Mecca only. Yes. No, he's, he was already born because had this a Muslim, had this a Muslim, when a Tamim would dare, had this Jasasa, Tamim would dare, had this authentic a Muslim, Tamim would dare one day with his people in the ship, in the Baha ocean. So they, they get an accident in the water, then the ship take them to the island. When they go to that island, they saw one big animals. They, they, when they see that animal, the animal, she, she's speaking. Then they ask her, who are you? The animal, he said, my name is Jasasa. So tell me with that, ask her, Jasasa, for who? They say, if you want to a lot of questions, just go to this room, you find somebody there. You ask him many questions. And Tanimu Dali and his friend, they go. They saw somebody, uh, somebody sit in the bed, and they put the uh, iron, like, hand, uh, chains to his uh, neck and his hand and his legs. He have one eyes. When they, they, he said them, he said, "Who are you?" The Tamil Dali said, "We are from place, place, place from another place from from the Yemen, from Kaza, Kaza, Kaza." Then he asked them, "Is it the last prophet come?" The Tamil Dali said, "Yes." He asked them, "Is this the river of place of place is not water inside?" Tell me that he said no, still have water inside. He asked them, is it the Nahil of social place is go or is still alive? Tell me that he said it's still alive. Then he said, he said, Anna Dajjal, I will come after this rivers is, is dry and after this Nahil is gone. When the Tanimu Dali saw that, he come to Medina and appointed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approved it. So now the jail is still alive in the island. He's still alive, but the time, he waiting his time to come. He's waiting his time, he's still alive in the island. The ulama said, this island between uh, island in Red Sea and Pacific Ocean. Like uh, between, uh, uh, between uh, Red Sea and Pacific Ocean. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to us because Professor Salama went to him daddy give the give the story he said he's from this place Professor Salama said he's from this place he saw through the Khalij Yemen and the Red Sea of Yemen to the Pacific Ocean he said from there so the Professor Salama explained to us he will come for Khorasan the possible is that the people they see him for a Khorasan. Where is Khorasan now? It's in Iraq. Where is in Iran? If he comes to Tulu, the place, Tulu Island, the possible is the people that they see him for 
Khorasan, Quran, Iran. So this is the reason why the ulama, many ulama said, many Shia people, they will follow the Dujjal. Because even in belief in Shia, they said they are watching Mahdi Montaza. He come to help them to defeat the war. So they, when the Dujjal come, they say, oh, he is the one. They follow him. They follow him. So he started from Khurasan, and the many people follow him, but the, the place that he declared himself in Iraq. Then he started, he go all over the world. He go all over the world. Except uh, Medina and Mecca only. Why at that time, at that time, the jail, if he come, Professor Asa explained the people that they can follow the jail. Everything Professor Asa explained. Professor Asa said, if the jail come, I am still alive, I am the one who can pass him. But if he come, I am not still alive, so anybody, he tried to defend himself. So this is the reason why Professor Asa teach us and give us the conditions and the all things regarding the Dujjal, he explained to us. He explained the people that they can follow Dujjal. First people, Yahud. Jews people. Second people, Professor Lassar will give the people that they have the round pace, like Buddhist people, like from South Korea, like uh, from China, and so on. Professor Lassar explained. So most of them, they follow the Dujjal. And the women again. Why? My ulama said, why the women, they follow the Jujan? Because they don't have strong Iman. Because a little thing can make the a woman to change. If they saw something that is very good or early, they follow. So this is the reason Professor Lassar said, he said at that time, somebody, he come in his house, he calls his wife and his daughter, in order to prevent them from Dujjal, but they broke the house, they followed the Dujjal. And the Ulam Professor Sama said, the people that they don't have knowledge, Juhal, because they don't know, they don't have knowledge of Sunnah. So if they saw the Dujjal, they're expecting that he's, he's, the, he's the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him um, uh, give him something that he can do to confuse you are uh, you are seeing or anything like that so if he meets somebody he's jahil he's usually to say to him do you did you agree did you believe believe in me he said no if you if you need i believe of you i need to work of my father and my grandfather then do he said why is there grapes he go he work in he work up he work this uh, his grandfather and his, his grandmother from the grave, but they are not real one. This is the jinn. Then this jinn he said to the this jahil, yes, this is your lord, worshiping him. So most of the juhal they follow him. At that time, the Mahdi together with Muslim in Palestine. And when Dujjal come to the Palestine, he want to conquest Mahdi. Because when the Dujjal come Mahdi, and some Muslims, women, they go to the, uh, the mountain of Turusini, Turusini in Palestine. Then when they go there, the Dujjal came, he surrounding the place with Yehud, everything with Yehud, they went to he, he want to kill the Mahdi and some the people that they not follow him. At that time, Mahdi and his people, they already agree after Salatul Fajr, they will come and fight Dujjal. So before that, in the Fajr prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. When he come, the Mahdi, he want to lead the prayer. When the Mahdi see the Prophet Isa, he said to Prophet Isa, come and lead prayer for us. Prophet Isa said, no, you lead us prayer. After they finish the prayer, 
Prophet Isa come and saw the Dujjal. When the Dujjal saw the Prophet Isa, he ran away. And he started, Prophet Isa followed him and get him and kill him in Babel Lut. Babel Lut. Now Babel Lut is in the, no, in, in the Palestine. The ulama said now Babel Lut is the airport. Yeah, airport in Palestine. Yeah. So at that time, when the Dujak is died, the Yahud ran away. They ran away. So the Muslim come and kill Yahud. Even if the Yahud hide in uh, behind tree or any mountain, they said, Ya Muslim, Haza Yahudi Ba'adi, Uktulhu. So this is Dujal. So as Professor Lalata explained everything regarding the Dujal. You said you said he have the alphabet ka fa ra. He said anybody can read it. Even if his movement, even he don't he don't he don't know write he don't write he don't read, he can read it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give him, he say, Oh this kapara, kapir. But only women can see that. But not women or ahlul bidi I can never see that. So just they can follow the jal. So yeah? Yeah? Who's yeah? the Yajuj the Majuj? Yajuj the after Dujjal. After Dujjal passed, when the Prophet Isa bring the justice and ability in the world at that time, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet Isa, some my servant they will come to you now. You can never pass them. So this is Yajuj the Majuj. They come, they eat everything. At any place they come. Now you then said maybe they start from the China. We hear the, their story. No, if they come, we are sitting here. We see one one come here. Mm -hmm. He enter here. No, they we said. Oh, now they are in China. We hear they they come. No, if they come at any place, we see them. Yeah? This is uh, Gabe, Allah SWT, you see, you come from here, you come from here, you come from here. Yes. So, if, no, we don't know. Allah SWT mentioned in the Quran, the Prophet explained to us. So, if they come, anything that they see, they eat. Even the Pacific Ocean, they will take that water all. Yaju the Majish. Then, Prophet Isa with the movement at that time, he prayed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something like insect, small insect. So this insect come to the neck of the Yajuda Majuju and it started eat their neck. Then they all die. In one in one hour they die all. So after they die, their blood is in, in anywhere in the world, and they are just sir, in, in, in anywhere in the world. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Prophet uh, Isa pray to the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala send the yes uh, ismuhu this eh? no um, that bet that is very long like eagles. Yes, they come and take this Yaju the Majus, they go somewhere else Allah SWT knows the way they, they will go then. After that, this hadith is long hadith in Sahih Muslim. After that, Prophet Isa passed away and the Allah SWT the send the ear from the sham. Any woman, this ear take his life. Only the people remain in the world, the Pusak. And kupar. So, Professor Lassama said, Fa alayhim takumu sa'a. Fa alayhim takumu sa'a. So, al qiyama cannot come until nobody in the world who knows Allah. Professor Lassama said that because that year, if he come, any person who have like an atom of belief in his heart, he take his life. 
then they remain the people that they don't know anything the shaitan come at that time he said he bring the idols sanam he said this is a lot just worshiping him they started they are doing zina awfully everything awfully they don't know anything prophet sallallahu said pa alayhim taqumusa this is the reason why in one hadith prophet sallallahu said la taqumusa hatta kullu nas la ya'rafuna man huwa allah al qiyamah can never come until the people they don't know who is allah so pa alayhim taqumusa so if somebody know allah al qiyamah can not start until the all the believers in perish after that the kiyama can come Allah must stand. So this thing, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained everything regarding the Dujjal, regarding the Mahdi, regarding the Yajuj, the Majuj, regarding everything that can happen in grave, everything Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to us. In one hadith? No, in many, many hadiths. But this hadith that I mentioned, Yajuj, the Majuj, and Dujjal, and Nuzulu Isa, in one hadith, the hadith is Umrah, be Musahi Muslim. Is this authentic? It's authentic hadith. Yes, it's Ibn Adam. It's Ibn Adam. Ibn Yajid the Majid is from human beings. Before they used to enter the war, before. When the Zulkan Nain came in the Surah Al Kahab, he is the one who put the long wall between us and them. But in the day, if they, they will come, they break that wall and enter. The wall is broken. Eh? The wall is broken. It's not broken. It's, it's broken, you see them here now. <laughs> it's not broken. But this one has no hall, hall, oh. only a hall. Had this show, only a hall, small hall. But if it's broken, they will see them here now. Always they try to break the wall, but can they can never do it until the time that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala send them to us. Yeah, after the jail go, after the jail, then we are the majiju, attire you the majiju then. Uh, the first one who can, he can appear is Mahdi. Then Dujjal, then Prophet Isa, and then Yaju the Majuj, and the uh, ear, um, the ear and the, the camel that of that da battle art. Adaba. Adaba means uh, some people said is the you know the camel of Prophet Saleh. But the ulama said it's not. It's Daba that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent in order to differentiate between Mumin and Kafir. If she come with the stick, they put you, if you are a Mumin, they put you, you are a Mumin. At that time, people, they know this is Mumin and this is Kafir. So after Daba, then the sun to come from the west. Then after that, that air come from the from the sham and he take all the life of believers after that al qiyamah in one hadith in hadith sumura it's long hadith in sahil muslim hadith is authentic and this hadith tanimu tanimu dar for the dujal he saw dujal again is hadith authentic in sahil muslim so dujal is still alive he's still alive but we don't know why he's in yeah? The one is blocking the Yajjal or the blocking the Yajjal? Yajjal the Majjus. They are the one who broken the wall. But Dujjal, now he's living in island. <coughs> in island. But you don't know which island. But Professor Lassama said he sought from the Iraq, from Red Sea to Pacific Ocean. He said he, he among the, he living there. The there. Yeah, maybe. We don't know the place. But he's still alive. Eh? Do you know Imran Hussein? No, I don't know. Because he said, he according to you, he's a person who studied as a theology, that is a Qiyamah. So he said that Dajjal would come from England. And he 
and it had it is uh, he is already there uh, because the uh, you know the Freemason mm -hmm. have got certain degree so the topmost is Dajjal so that Dajjal is uh, in England now there is uh, the king the official queen but the Oh, it's some people that they want to not accept the hadith of the jail. They say that some people they say the Ajuj the Majuj is not really Ajuj the Majuj. Means this is the colonial, colonial waste that enter the Islamic countries. Some people say it's Dujal, not real Dujal is all the eh, all the person that is is not good. He like uh, Jews and anything. But we said no. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained, you must believe. Because Oma uti tu mina ilmi la kalila. Because you are, you are knowledge, you are, is, is limit. But if Allah said something of Prophet, just you believe. This is the sifa of mu'min. Alladhina yu'minuna bil gaib. The mu'min, he believe in ability. If Allah says something of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, He says, Samina wa atana. You don't say it. Oh, no, I don't say he's kafir. I don't say that. Maybe if he don't believe, we look for him. We don't say he's kafir. We look for him. Maybe he has shubaha. Maybe he thought, uh, maybe he's a jahil. He's jahil. So we can never, we, only with that we said, he make a mistake, but we said he's capable. We don't say that until we know that he already know, but just he deny it. So that is uh, but some people they have shubaha because we don't say this is capable with shubaha. Maybe he has shubaha. <laughs> like now, Mortazila they they said Dujal he can never come, and Yaju the Maji he never they, they never come. So we don't say they are kuffar because they have shubha. So this is the sifa of mumin to believe in everything that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Everything. Is it you understand it? Or oh, you don't understand it, just you believe. This is the sifa of mumin. Alladhina yu'minuna bil gaib. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bring the sifa of mumin, He said, Alladhina yu'minuna bil gaib. So you, you believe in gaib. Anything that Prophet said or Allah said, just you believe. You don't ask why. If you said why, so this is the way to be upstream. Just you believe. Because the Sahaba, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed the distance, they, they don't say why. Just they accept and believe. So if you want to get a right way just so you believe so you said Dujal is not Dujal means another thing or Yajuji is not Yajuji the Majuji is another thing or Prophet Isa he can never come again if he come is it his prophet all this is is useless for you because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he doesn't say to say that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the Sahaba just they accept they don't ask Prophet if Prophet Isa he come is it his prophet or not? They don't ask him that. Just they believe. So if you believe, if Allah asks you, you said because prophet said that, I believe. It's okay for you. So what to get Yes, he teach us in the each prayer. Yes. So now. Does, that, does that mean that we do not live during that time? Or can you get us Firstly, before Dujal come, we have the protection of Dujal is divided into two. We have the thing that Professor Sama teach us to do before Dujal come, in order to protect, uh, protect ourselves from him if he come. And another thing, if he can, he come, how we can prevent ourselves from him. So the thing that Professor Sama teach us, firstly, to get a knowledge in in Sharia as Sahih to know to get a knowledge the pure knowledge because if you don't have knowledge it's easily for the to take you because you don't know his sifat so this is the first thing 
and second thing you be in sunnah you be in sunnah because the ulama said many ahlul bid'ah they will follow the jihad because the sunnah is the sunnah that can prevent you to do any obstacle if you don't know the real sunnah authentic sunnah from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is easily for you to follow the jihad then al istiqama al istiqama means to obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Prophet Sallallahu said, if the Jal come, he can never get power to the believers. So if you have istikama, you obey Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Jal, he, he don't have any way to you. And another thing, a dua, this dua, a dua, in end of each prayer, Allahumma niya uzubika min azabi jahannam, wa min fitnatil mahaya wal mamati, wa min fitnatil kalb, Women Peter the Masihi, the Jal. Another thing, reading of Surah Al Kaf. Reading of Surah Al Kaf. Reading of Surah Al Kaf is preventing you from do Jal. So it's better only to so read Surah Al Kaf. And if he come, the first thing, Professor Allah said. If you hear the jail here, don't say, I want to go and meet him. Just run away. Don't meet him. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, some people at that time, they said, oh, I have strong. I want to meet him. If they meet him, they confuse him, confuse them, and they follow him. So the first one, if you hear him here, just run away. But if he meet you, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we read to him the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. The first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. If he meet you, yes, if he meet you, because if you don't meet you, you hear him here, just run away. Don't allow yourself to meet him. But if, if he meet you, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, try we read for him, the first 10 ayah of Surah Al-Kahf. The first 10 ayah of Surah Al-Kahf. And another hadith, he said, the first 10 ayah of Surah Al-Kahf and the last two ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, Amana Rasul. So if you see, if you read, he can never get away from you. So this is the way to prevent yourself from the dujal. Before and after he come. Especially Surah Al-Kahf, you read it always, it's very important. And this now. Surah al Yes, we have another hadith, but the most authentic is this one. Yes, most authentic is this one. Yes, so Ulama said the most authentic is the post 10 ayahs, the hadith that showed the most, the post 10 ayahs of Surah al -Kahf. So the hadith said the last 10 ayahs in Surah al -Kahf. So, so Ulama said the most authentic is this one, because this is Bukhari and Muslim. Then some Ulama said, oh, if it's that, just to read Surah al -Kahf, all from the end, from the beginning up to the end but if you read the post ayah of it is okay because we have one hadith professor Al said if you meet him ikra alayhi surat al -Kahf. another hadith is authentic again if you read him if you meet him you read ikra alayhi surat al -Kahf. you read surat al -Kahf. Eh? Eh, it depends for you if you are but usually in friday Yes, yes, because this is the reason why I said the the pro, to protect yourself in from the jail is you have two ways before the jail come and uh, after he come before he come you must to have knowledge of him 
you have have knowledge of him and for a person to explain to us how the Dujel he will appear Professor Lassam said Dujel he never appeared to us until the people they forget Dujel if the people they forget Dujel they don't explain this picture of appearance of Dujel in the Manabir he said had tired to look at Imma P. Bayani Dujel al Manabir if the time come the Aima in prayer in masjid they don't explain to people who is Dujal at that time he will come so this is the ulama if professor if he said the time come the people forget Dujal they don't explain Dujal they keep quiet about him saying at that time he will come In Salah, yes, I each every prayer. Before, before Salah. Before Salam. After you finish the Tashahud, you say, Allahumma inya uzubika min azabi jahannam wa min azabi al-qabr wa min pitnati al-mahya wa al-mamati wa min pitnati masihi dajjal. Wa min pitnati masihi dajjal. So this is a dua, is a, this dua is authentic dua in from Bukhari and Muslim. So this, but after, before, so you must learn knowledge. Because when the Dijal come to Medina, he want to enter, he saw the Malaika in, in any gate, in any way to the Medina, Malaika is there. So he stayed up at back. So one person from Medina come out and when the Dujal come to the Medina, the Medina, the people, the Munafik that are living in Medina or Kapir or Pasik, they will come out and follow Dujal. Because at that time, Professor Lassam said, if he go to the Medina, the Medina uh, like a atqua in Medina. So if the Medina do atqua, any person that is Munafik or Pasik, he will come out and follow Dujal. So even if you are in Medina, you are not safe. Because if you are Pasik, you can come out and be giving, follow him. So this is the reason why the ulama said al istikama. Even if you are in Mecca, in Medina, you don't have istikama. If Dujal come, you, you come out and follow him. So at that time, Professor Lula Sama said, some shab, shab, a used man, shab somebody maybe between 30 years to 40 years he come out when he saw Dujjal he said Ashhadu annaka Dujjal allazi ahabarana bihi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he saw Dujjal he said to the people oh really I believe you are the Dujjal who professor Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us when he said that the Dujjal catch this person and lay him down and he cut him into two he cut him into two and when he cut him into two he take the the one part and put very far away and one part very far away then Dujal he said come again together then the the one part and the second part come together again and this person alive again there because Dujel do that in order to confuse the people when when he do that after this man again is alive again the Dujel asks him did you believe now I am I am Allah this person said now I believe that you are real Dujel <laughs> because Professor Allah Salman informed us you want to do that thing for, for, for somebody from his own I am the one. I am the one. This is knowledge because he have knowledge. He read, he already know. So the judge, he said, I want to kill you now. He said, you don't have right to kill me now because Professor Allah Sama informed me, inform us, if you do that for me, if you want to try to kill me, you can never make it again. Then the judge, he tried to kill him again, but he can never do it again. So this is time of knowledge because this person is an knowledgeable man. He knew. 
So this is the protection. Most firstly, you have knowledge, Sharia knowledge. If we say knowledge here, we mean Islamic knowledge, no another knowledge. <coughs> because Yahudi, they have knowledge, but they are followed to jail. We mean Islamic knowledge. Istikama. You, have, you must have istikama. Because even if you are in Medina, you don't have istikama. If you just come, Professor Allah said, you go out and follow him. Again, a dua, this dua. But if he appear, well, before appear, and you read Surah al kafir always. And if he appear, just read for him 10 ayahs of Surah al kaf And if you hear him, just run away from him. Don't meet him. Run away from him. But if, if he meet you, just read 10 first ayah of Surah al kaf to him. So this is the how way to protect yourself from Dujjal. Okay. Yes, Thursday yes, or on Friday, Thursday night or on Friday morning. Yes, yes. <coughs> yes, what is the meaning of Masih? Masih means why you said the, the, the ulama said why they call Dujjal Masih and why they call Prophet Isa Masih. Because the meaning, they have two meanings. Masih min al Masih means the somebody who touch every land in the world. The somebody who is traveler. Always he's traveler. He's traveler. He go this place, he go this place, he go this place. It means Masaha means he touch any land in the world. The ulama said they call Dujel Masih because he want to touch any land in the world or except Medina and Mecca. He will enter any town. So they call him Masih. This is the reason why they call Prophet Isa Masih. Because at his time, he don't live in one place, Prophet Isa. He don't live in one place. If he go this town, he preach and he go another town. To win his life before Allah SWT take him to the uh, heaven, he don't live in one place. So this is the reason why they call him Masih, Masih Isa, because he, uh, he is traveler. So even they call Dizel Masih because he, he is traveler. In 40 days, he, 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 he will touch any land in the world. So this is the first. The ulama said no, because this Masih mean al Masih, because he don't see with one, he don't, he second eyes, he don't see with his second eyes, Masaha Nuru Aynahu means his eyes is already gone. Masaha means he don't see with his eyes. One, he, he has only one eyes, he don't see with the second eyes. This is, a call, this is the reason call him Masih because his one eyes is already gone. So this is the reason. But for the Isa, because He's a traveler. He don't live in one place. No, yes. Seven ocean? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, it's, our time is over. Okay. So now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any question? So now this is the definition of Hadith Hassan. So no difference between Hadith and Hassan and authentic Hadith only in one condition. This is strong memorization and this is not strong memorization like Hadith Sahih. So next week, inshallah, we start with Hadith that is very wide and very 
longer, inshallah. So, uh, regarding for the ruling, it's the same thing with hadith Hassan as Sahih. All, uh, all these two types, hadith al Hassan and hadith al Sahih, we can apply it in our ibadah. You can apply it in, in our ibadah. But hadith al Da'if, it's not allowed for us to apply it in our ibadah because ibadah. Only Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can say this is Ibadah and we take it. We don't take Ibadah from anybody because only from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we take our Ibadah. So if Hadith is not authentic, so this is not Ibadah from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that this is the reason why in Ibadah only Hadith authentic we can apply. InshaAllah. <laughs> Her, her is coming. Yes. Lot of, uh, sign, sign, uh, sign board, says, uh, and Can you take one part or two parts of the kettle and say that it's for Akika? Together we said this one kettle to one say. One kettle for seven, right? Yes, one kettle for seven. One or two for Akika. I, I think I don't understand. It means that you imagine the Adha with Akika in one kettle, or what do you mean? No, no, one kettle, and seven people. people. Yes. Mm. And some people take one or two parts for Akika. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> only. Because the Hadith says uh, only, only goats, isn't it? Yes. For Akika, isn't it? Yes. So, but here we practice that. Oh, to, I, maybe they have something from Shapia. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't check. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is the call of Shapia. But inshallah, I'll research. I don't know, because I don't say it is wrong because I don't read. I must. Maybe it has evidence. I don't know. But I will check for it. Inshallah, I will check for it. I will check. Yeah. Yes, I will check, but I don't know now. Maybe it's the it's from Shapi'i, I don't know. Maybe they have some call from Shapi'i, I don't know. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, this is the. Normally, we do the Akika after seven days, but this is normally. But if you don't have, it's allowed for you after 10 years, if you get, you can do. After this example, after how many years? years. Maybe now, when I am baby, maybe my father, he don't do Akika for me. Now I am, if I know that, I have money, I can buy Akika for, I do it for myself. No, no, uh, no, no limit, no limit. But normally in seven days. But if you don't have, you can do it after you be matured. At any time you get a time. Maybe if your father he don't have money now, he don't. Give, maybe after you have two years, he get a money. He can do it for you. I heard some stars. Kurban is uh, ibadah. Akika is not really ibadah. I say it's ibadah. Is, you know, it's Ibadah, yes. but you can share the meat with non-Muslim. You give no-Muslim meat? No, no, meat? You call, you call your non-Muslim friends to eat the meat of the food. Oh. Korban, they say you can. Uh, no, uh, excuse me. The Korban means, uh, means Eid al-Adha. Yeah. Yes, and Hadaya in Mecca. And Akika, this add her in the post time in the post in the post place the professor Allah Salama said to give sadaqah with other how we don't eat at that post time but but later the professor Allah Salama allowed us to eat and to do sadaqah so if it's sadaqah you give sadaqah if, if sadaqah is sadaqah if maybe you give it to the unbeliever in order to call him to the Islam, it's allowed. Because even Zakah is Sadaqah, 
we give the people that as unbelievers an order to call them to the Islam. Mu'alla Fatul Qulub, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to give sadaqa to the kuppar. Used to give sadaqa to the kuppar in order to call them to the Islam. So this is not, it's not haram. If maybe you, you take a meat for sadaqa and give to kafir, you, maybe he's ne you are neighbor. You give him order, maybe he know yeah, the Islam is good religion, and maybe you call him to the Islam. It's not because even zakah, zakah is allowed to give mu'alla patil qulub the kuppar that we see if they, maybe if you give them, they will convert to Islam. It's allowed for zakah to give them. Zakah is sadaqah. The same thing is ibadah zakah. Because adaha is not compulsory, but zakah is compulsory. But we give it to the mu'alla patil qulub, so it's allowed. So if, if it's sadaqah, you can give kafir if you see it has impact to him in order to convert him to Islam. So it's allowed. Akika, the same thing. The same thing. You can give your, it's your kafir, it's never, maybe your neighbor is kafir, you can give him. No problem. No problem. You can give him. Yeah. No, the ulama, because the, the action of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to give sadaqa to the kuppar. And the Quran said to give zakah to the mu'allafatul qulub. The kuppar that we see, maybe if they give them the nearest to enter Islam, if you give them, maybe they will enter Islam, you can give them zakah. We say, oh, this is our religion, in our religion, we have something to help the poor people. To give him order, if he know that maybe he enter Islam. Maybe that's the reason why. The Christian is saying, oh, uh, he asked from the religious council to give them part of the zakat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the politics. I don't say anything regarding the, the, the demand. Yeah. The, the okay, inshallah, we we'll stop here. I see you next week, inshallah. Wa subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta. Astagfiruka wa atubu ilaika. Assalamu alaikum.